Hey everyone, it's Flackfire. Battlefield 5 has some complex game mechanics. There are plenty of nuances familiar only to veterans, and even then there are some secrets known only to a few. For this video, let's look at 15 things you might not know you could do in Battlefield 5. Let's start with spotting flares. These useful gadgets reveal enemies on the minimap and actively spot them in-game. The higher the flare is fired, the more area it reveals. Friendly flares burn white, while enemy flares glow a sinister red. This is helpful for two key reasons. First, it tells you if your position may be compromised, and second, it tells you if you can destroy the flare. Spotting flares in Battlefield 1 were a pain. They'd set you on fire if you stepped on them, and there was no real way to counter them. Now, they can still burn you in Battlefield 5, but at least now, you're able to swat them from the sky with your weapon. This not only protects you, but your teammates as well. Next, some fortifications can be very effective in Battlefield 5, but many of them also have a fatal flaw. They're only as strong as the foundations on which they're built. If a fortification is built on a platform, destroying that platform will also destroy the fortification. This applies in particular to some of the best secret anti-tank gun positions in the game. And for a list of those best fortification locations in Battlefield 5, you can click the link here on the screen. Third on the list is Smoke. It's a versatile tool in Battlefield 5 that is often overlooked. Not only does Smoke screen you visually, it also hides you on the minimap shields you from spotting flares, and can even remove an active spot. You can create smoke by using smoke grenades, special abilities with vehicles, and by using the smoke barrage reinforcement as a squad leader. Next, reviving squad mates is something top-tier teammates do in Battlefield 5, but there is an added benefit to scooping up your wounded buddies. Your gun actually gets reloaded. This mechanic is helpful since you're probably going to empty your magazine, downing the soldiers that wounded your teammates. Now, this mechanic doesn't work for the medic, so don't forget that risky revives can be cancelled by pressing the same button during the revive animation. For our fifth thing, let's talk about contextual movement. I've mentioned in previous videos that you're able to roll when hitting the crouch button right before impact during a fall. This can reduce or totally eliminate fall damage from reasonable heights. Ledge grabs can also be incredibly useful. They let you cross things like destroyed bridges and can help you reach advantageous areas. You can employ a ledge grab by holding the jump button. Now, let's talk about squad leaders. One of the biggest mistakes that squad leaders make is only ever marking an objective for an attack. When a team's offense stalls, it's easy for things to get bogged down between objectives. This means you never capture the marked objective, and you're missing out on some valuable squad requisition points. So what's the solution? Consider marking an objective for defense. As long as your team holds that position as the counter runs down, you'll score at least 200 points per squad mate in the vicinity. Similarly, when it comes to contested flags, remember that being closer to the flag is worth more than being further away. If two players are on the same flag, the one closest to the center of the objective will start to capture it. This information is useful since it can help you locate enemies camping at the edge of an objective. For our eighth thing, I want to talk about one of the pettiest things you can do in Battlefield 5, and it involves incendiary grenades. Older FPS games allowed you to jib downed enemies to prevent revives by shooting them. Shooting downed enemies in Battlefield 5 does nothing but setting them on fire. Well, that's a different story. This actually runs down the revive timer extremely quickly, making it almost impossible to revive the player in time. And even then, you're likely to set any rescuers ablaze. Meanwhile, the Piat in Battlefield 5 secretly masquerades as a mortar. Next time you use it, expand your minimap and aim down the site. You'll spot a target reticle on the minimap which shows you where your rounds will land. This lets you use the Piat for indirect fire, which is useful for attacking without exposing yourself to enemy fire. Another anti-tank weapon with several uses is the boy's anti-tank rifle. Although it does limited damage against heavily armored vehicles, it does have some great utility. Target the turret, tracks, or engine at the rear of the tank to hamstring it and make it easier for teammates to take out. 
The boys can also penetrate most cover and even destroy walls and roofs, dropping debris on enemies for some bonus damage. Our next little trick in Battlefield 5 is the ability to cancel grenades. We've all been in a position where split second right before we release that grenade, the targeted enemy dies or moves to a less than ideal location. Simply switch back to your weapon before releasing the throw button and save your grenade for later. This trick also works for the throwing knife with the recon class. Twelfth on the list is a bit more difficult to do in Battlefield 5, but only because the weapon used here is much more uncommon. Bayonet charges were commonplace in Battlefield 1, but you're also able to employ them in Battlefield 5. Specifically for this trick, you're able to bayonet charge through doors and skewer an enemy on the other side. Generally, you'll need a good bit of luck or situational awareness to pull it off, but when it happens, it's an amazing Battlefield moment. So if you're running into a house you suspect might be occupied, it might be best to do it behind a foot-long blade. Next, let's talk about ammo and health crates. Did you know you don't even need to drop one to help out your teammates? Simply holding the crate will activate its area of effect, meaning just walking up to friendly soldiers will supply them with ammo or health if they need it. Having the crate in your loadout also lets players grab supplies from you without actually having to hand it to them. Meanwhile, support players often need a place to deploy a bipod, and did you know that you can create one wherever you like using your ammo crate? Just place it on the ground in the direction you intend to shoot. You can also deploy your bipod on a friendly soldier if you can convince someone to be your personal meat shield. Lastly, you might think the Artillery Strike and V1 are the only offensive strikes you can call in Battlefield 5. And well, you can actually use the Supply Drop container to crush enemies. This is particularly hilarious if you're being pestered by an obnoxious sniper. Unfortunately, it is a little bit difficult to do, and you don't get points for the kill. Before you go, here's a bonus trick. AP mines are the bane of infantry. Now, we all know we can shoot them to destroy them and go prone to avoid damage, but did you know that you can avoid setting them off entirely? Crawling doesn't trigger the mine, which means you can actually sneak up on dug-in enemies without alerting them to your presence. And while you're at it, you can also defuse those mines. So, which of these things are your favorites? And is there anything you think should be on this list? Tell me your favorite little-known tips and tricks down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, share, and subscribe. Tap the notification bell to get updates on the latest Battlefield videos. And as always, thanks for watching.